Fair housing claims follow a relatively standard procedure, but every case is unique. Additionally, the aggrieved have a right to at any time take the case to court if they feel the process isn't working for them. The entire process of the fair housing claim is public. Once a claim is brought against you or your company, it will be listed in the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, along with whatever resolution is found. After a fair housing claim has been made, the first step is investigation. HUD will attempt to determine if there's been a violation or pattern of violations. They'll interview tenants, employees, and any other material witness. HUD or some other third party may also conduct testing. Testing is when an individual in a protected class, such as a single mother or a Hispanic individual, will attempt to acquire housing in order to personally observe the discriminatory practice. Testers are legally protected and their identity is confidential. While conducting testing, HUD will attempt to initiate conciliation. Conciliation is when HUD brings the landlord and the aggrieved together to attempt to resolve the issue outside of court. This is similar to a plea bargain or adjudication, except that it's neither mandatory nor binding. If a problem is resolved to everyone's satisfaction during conciliation, then the matter will be closed. If one party violates the conciliatory agreement, then it will be usually taken as conclusive evidence that they were in the wrong. The results of conciliation can be made private so long as it's part of the agreement and both sides consent. In general, it's much cheaper to agree to conciliation than to go to court. Once the investigation is complete, the department will issue a determination on whether housing discrimination exists or not. If the department believes that the landlord has committed or is about to commit an act which violates fair housing law, then HUD will file charges against the landlord. After filing charges, the claim will be heard in one of two courts. By default, the case will be tried before a HUD administrative law judge, but either party can also choose to have the case tried before a U.S. district court. Regardless of the method chosen, the landlord, if found guilty, may be ordered to pay damages, legal fees, and provide services and amenities. Standing is a legal term for the right to bring a court case. In general, only people who have suffered an injury or are likely to suffer an injury can bring a lawsuit. For instance, a person would have no standing to bring a court case against a burglar they read about in the newspaper. If, on the other hand, it was their house that was robbed, then they have standing. Under fair housing law, anyone who has been injured or who, who may be injured has standing, and this includes tenants, prospective tenants, family members of tenants, and testers who were discriminated against. It can even include tenants who didn't experience discrimination but feel damaged due to the discrimination. For instance, a Latino tenant is rejected for housing based on their race. A white tenant in the neighborhood could sue because they're being denied the right to live in the integrated community. Their reputation could be harmed by being associated with discriminatory housing practices. If a claim is brought against you, there are some steps you must take. In most cases, you'll want to seek legal counsel as early as possible. Any missteps made during the process could make you appear guilty, even if you're not. The first step is to ensure that there's absolutely no retaliation against the person making the complaint. Employees may feel personally insulted and want to give poor service or kick the tenant out. This cannot be done, as that is in itself a violation of fair housing law. You should let any affected persons like office staff and the owner know about the allegations. You'll then need to develop a public position. You should determine one or two people to be spokespersons in case the media contacts you. These people should have a strong understanding of your public position. The public position shouldn't be as simple as no comment. Regardless of what the administrative findings are, you'll be tried first by public opinion. For this reason, you'll need to make sure that you have a strong defense plan if the matter becomes news. You need to gather all evidence and be ready to turn it over to HUD investigators. Trying to interfere with the investigation carries up to a $100,000 federal fine. Be polite, respectful, and attentive. If there's any merit to the complaint, 
then you should do whatever is necessary to correct the problem. If you have an employee who is engaged in discriminatory practices, then you should reprimand or terminate them. If you have a rule that is discriminatory, then you should look at changing the rule. Any action you take to alleviate the problem will be taken as evidence that the violation wasn't willful. This can help you in court. To be perfectly clear, none of what we've talked about here should be taken as legal advice or counsel. We aren't lawyers. What we have presented here are suggestions of how to respond when faced with a fair housing complaint. If you have questions about legal matters, contact a licensed attorney. Unless you're a licensed attorney yourself, always direct your client to seek one when you have questions about legal procedures.